There are a lot of shockers in Ready or Not. Women being fed dog food and sold as slaves, meth heads attempting to poison the water main of Los Sueños, and who could forget Vol's basement? All of these monsters running around Los Sueños, yet those acts of evil are oftentimes kept in the shadows, hidden away from public view. Most Los Sueños are not subjected to the horrors these creatures create. This time, however, the monsters are standing in plain sight. Welcome to the Ready or Not Lore series, where in today's episode we will be discussing the mission Neon Tomb. As always, this video will be divided into two sections, the first being all developer and in-game confirmed information, and the second being my own theories as to where the story may go in the future. U.S. airstrikes have targeted villages housing a notorious terrorist group with ties to U.S. cells in northern Yemen. One such cell is known as The Hand, which has enacted a domestic response to the military incursion. Beginning not with the map but a trailer, we witness how this all started. Thanks to translations in the comments, members of The Hand say, check your ammunition, I could have brought a better costume than this, and hey focus, before mentioning in English, this is for them. They bring war to us, we bring war to them. This almost leads me to believe that the U.S. launched a preemptive attack on the hand seeing their ties in the U.S. Basically stop them now before they become a problem later. Regardless, arriving on the scene, we see the remnants of a massacre. People waiting in line just moments ago now lie in a pile of corpses. Interestingly enough, the ambulance outside is empty, almost signifying that there were too many bodies, so what's the point? At the bottom of the ambulance, we can also see a phone number to contact or a MindJot account, which is a nice little touch of world building. We can also see a few ads on the walls outside the club, one for Nikki's jewelry store, booths and booty for lease, and American Fatboy, just to name a few. Nearing the front, we see a dead ATM with a MindJot link nearby selling drugs. We can also see a poster advertising that Live Rat is performing tonight. You may remember this reference all the way back to Janie's room in Valley of the Dolls. Also, did you know that Live Rat is actually a reference to Dead Mouse? But also, did you know Live Rat is actually a reference to Dead Mouse? No, really, Live Rat is actually a reference to Dead Mouse. Guys, Live Rat is a reference to Dead. No, 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 guys, seriously, did you know Live Rat is actually a reference to. D guys, guys, Live Rat is a reference to Dead Mouse. <sighs> I gotta, I gotta stop looking at comments. Right next to the entrance, we see a sign that says, Dear Patrons, due to events last week, we are taking your safety very seriously. Please bear with the increased wait times as we scan each individual. Thank you. This explains why there are so many people outside. Because of this increased security, these people were just stuck waiting in line. And with the only entrance to the club being the alleyway, the alleyway the hand was blocking when they arrived, these people had nowhere to go and were simply mowed down where they stood. Entering the premises, we see another ad for Liver 4T saying they're performing on April 19th, thus placing this map then. Inside the wristband check counter, we see the number the girls working there are allowed to call. Strangely enough, they aren't allowed to dial 5, 6, 7, or 8, or else they'll get a talking to. I assume this is tied in some way to the human traffickers, though it can't be confirmed. Closer to the dance floor, we crawl only to stop at the bar and coat handling areas. There's nothing behind the bar, but on the coat side, we find some interesting things. A sign that says, no, the girls don't want your number. Check your coat and fuck off. Hey you, no, you did not hear from the front that the coat check room was free. Pay up or carry your shit. And don't touch the waitresses, you might lose a hand. Behind the counter, there are actually a lot of nice reminders and helpful hints for the girls, telling them how to handle drunks, who to call in situations, and a list of useful insults, such as any curse word you can think of, followed by boy, hey handsome, no, not you, you coming here to keep up appearances, and surprise we let people your height in here. We can also see a collection of numbers given to the girls they've swiftly discarded. What's also interesting is there is a calendar in here that says June 4th. As we previously saw, the date should be April 19th, and spoilers for the next episode, but on the hospital map, Relapse, that map takes place on May 8th, 2022. Which makes sense, seeing as that map takes place not long after this one. I assume they just left this calendar on June because they like the picture of the cowboy man. Who might be Vol, but I can't quite tell. 
By the cash register, we see a note saying, keep the damn till closed. Someone reached through the glass and took a bunch of money last week. This may be what they were referencing out front with the sign discussing increased security, but they specifically mentioned taking safety very seriously, so I don't know if these two events are linked. Going out the side door, we hear a ghastly sound, cell phones ringing. Loved ones of the deceased are attempting to reach out to them, only to fall on deaf ears. We find another pile of bodies, most likely stumbling over themselves to get out, only to be trapped by a locked door and gunned down in mass. The word kadamada kam the word kadamada the word kamada that word is written on the wall. While I'm not 100% certain what this translates to, the closest approximation I could find is the Islamic term kada, meaning carrying out or fulfilling. So maybe this is them fulfilling the promise to hurt the US for the attacks on Yemen. Please, if any of you know the proper translation, leave it in the comments so I can pin it for the others. What's also of note here is that the door was chained shut from the inside. We can see this in other places around the map too. This could hint at two things. The hand came in, swept the corners, locked all the doors, and then opened fire on the dance floor. However, that would still be very loud with all that gunfire, and I don't think the music could muffle all the screams and shots. This could then potentially hint at an inside man, because to me, there would be no time to chain them shut before everyone heard the bullets fly. Anyway, there really isn't much else this way, so let's go back to the front. Entering a neon-lit tunnel, we hear the muffled pulses and rhythmic beats of music as we pass through. Entering the dance floor, we see what I'd wager is the second most jaw-dropping sight right up there with Vol's reveal. We find what's left. We are met with flashing lights, loud dubstep, and dozens of bodies stacked all around. The hand butchered these people. They had nowhere to run, and all they could do was hope for a quick end. Moving through here, it's impossible to not step on the bodies. The hand wanted to hurt the US and send a message of retaliation in response to their transgressions. With this display here, I think we got it loud and clear. With nothing in the bathrooms besides dope urinals, the bar or the pool room, besides looking like a recreation of that scene from John Wick and a sign that says, please do not copulate in our pools, let's move upstairs. Finding the balcony, we can find the corpse of Live R4T, who, in case you did not know, is a reference to Dead Mal 5. Also, what's strange is in the trailer of this mission, Living Rodent is depicted as a woman, yet here they're a man, probably just an oversight. However, looking at Vital Radis's equipment, we actually get a prompt, and when pressing it, we can turn the music and flashing lights off, which is nice for my sanity. Moving on, we can find the room where the security cams are kept, but nothing really stands out. And really, there isn't much else going on up here. However, what's interesting is two hostages found up here and sometimes downstairs wear a bandana concealing half their face, as well as a shirt that either says EGO or GEO. Not sure if they're supposed to mean anything, but it definitely does stand out nonetheless. That's basically all I found in this map. This really is a two-parter with the next episode, Relapse, adding a tad bit more, kind of, sorry, you, you, you'll see when that episode comes out. Despite that, there are a few things we can talk about. The hand is pissed. The US killed a lot of their friends and families back in Yemen, and this is their response. In the trailer, and as heard in a couple of voice lines, the location the US launched their airstrike in was Midi, Yemen. According to the hand, this was an uncalled for strike and resulted in the deaths of children and many innocent. We don't know why the US did this, other than the fact that Midi was apparently housing a notorious terrorist group. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't. Regardless, this slaughter was a direct result of said attack. It's really hard to speculate just what exactly the hand is up to, but I think there's something here we're not seeing. I think there's more to this faction other than Yemeni nationalists. Yet what is interesting is that they chose to attack this club out of any other. No, I don't think they had knowledge of the spider or the human trafficking operations or anything to do with the Los Sueños underground. I do, however, think story-wise, this event will come back to affect the spider subplot in some way. We know girls are being trafficked here. That's confirmed. Maybe off screen, CSI discovered more links to other trafficking hubs, which will lead to a new mission at some later date. Perhaps the hand are simply puppets. Maybe the USIA or some other faction wants to get anyone sniffing around their business to leave them alone. So based on their intel, maybe they knew how volatile the hand could be with a misplaced strike. Maybe they set up the attack in Yemen and then had an insider coerce the hand to attack a popular nightclub in response leaving them completely unaware of its human trafficking affiliations, but playing right into the USIA's hands. Pun intended. They launch the attacks, killing dozens of civilians, and get the LSPD to investigate the club. They find ties to the spider and focus on them, 
thus getting the LSPD off this faction, whoever they may be, is back for now. Also, it's worth noting this mission takes place three days after Valley of the Dolls, and I've seen some of you speculate that maybe Janie was at this club during this event because of the Live Rat poster in her room. Also, in case you didn't know, Live Rat is a reference to Dead Mouse. This could genuinely be a possibility because her birthday present, the G-Wagon we see starting Valley of the Dolls, is out front when you start the mission relapse. Could be a reused asset, but it's still a possibility. I don't think it's necessarily true, because I'd imagine she'd probably be with some relatives out of town trying to process the shit they're busting her dad for, or simply still under LSPD watch. So unless it's confirmed otherwise, we just don't know. Also, Jesus, can you imagine being deep platoon? Like, three days ago, they just busted a massive pedo who has a shrine to children in his basement and was also potentially melting and burying their remains in said basement, only to be called to one of the most bloody domestic terrorist attacks on US soil three days later. I don't think you can come back right from those experiences. Man, if there was a campaign with like voice acting and actual scenes, then this would be such a good juicy bit of drama to dig into. Just hearing deep platoon talk about how they're doing after seeing this insane level of monstrosity could be a fucking gold scene right there but i digress the horrors of los sueños know no bounds and this horrific event proves no one is truly safe in los sueños